Sean, when I think of estate agency hub or associate model self-employed agents, there's a few names that come up in my mind, yeah. and one of them <clears throat> is you. Okay. So, before t when did you start Newman's Estate Agents, and 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 let's go through your transition of turning yourself from a traditional estate agent into a hub associate model. So here we go. <laughs> When, when, did you st when did you first become an estate agent? So I started with Countrywide in 1986. Okay. You're looking well on you. You must have started as a, as a, <laughs> as a favourite one. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I, after a couple of years, I, I, um, well, I said to the, to the Countrywide, you know, they've made me manager, and I said, I want to earn more money. And if I don't earn more money, the only thing I can see is if I leave and set up my own estate agency business. <clears throat> I think at the time we were on like 15%. That's what we got paid. Very small basic, £250 a month or something. Um, and then they made me manager, which I thought, oh, great. But the trouble is... What year was this? So this would have been 1987. Yeah. But, and I was manager. But the problem with that, instead of getting 15% of everything I listed and sold, I was only getting a percentage of what everyone else did. And I assumed everyone was going to be like me and doing really, really well. And then I realised that I, wasn't going to, I was earning less money and uh, I wanted to earn more money, and I said, if, I don't, uh, if you don't give me more money, I'm going to have to leave. Yep. And the only way at the time for me to earn more money was to set up on my own, which I really didn't have any money. And uh, so they wouldn't pay me any more, and I left. And then, so what year did you leave? So 1988, January. I was about to say, that was just before the crash. <clears throat> yes, yes. So how, how did you feel about jacking your job <clears throat> in and having no money? Well, I was looking at the bigger picture, um, and I... Funny, I'll tell you how I, what, how I started my own business because it, it, it makes sense later on in the story that there was a state agency that wasn't doing very well, a very small office, six foot wide, and the owner had had various managers paying out lots of money and it was losing money. And, and he, he said, well, what, he approached me and said, what about that you take it over as a franchise and pay me 10% of all the money that you take? So that way he would get rid of all his liabilities because I'd have them and he'd get 10% Ooh. of something which would be pure profit. And I went, yeah, now I said, how much for the business? And um, it was literally not two desks and a, an old typewriter. It wasn't much oh. and it was not making any money and it wasn't a great brand. So he said, 6,000 pounds. I said, well, that's okay, but I haven't got 6,000 pounds. And he said, well, okay, well, look, I'll give you, uh, you can have it, but just pay me 500 pound a month for 12 months. I said, okay, well, that's fair, but I haven't got 500 pounds. And I literally didn't have 500 pounds. And he said, well, look, I'm not going to charge you anything for the first four months, then you can pay me £500 yeah. a month thereafter. And I went, okay. And I'd worked out that what I could sell in the first month would give me the money to pay that. And the, what was a little bit in the pipeline would cover the costs of the, the secretary and some of the newspaper adverts for the next four months. So I took it on. Um, it was a massive risk and a, a step into the unknown, but I was ambitious, confident, I was hardworking. And when I closed that office at 630 I would deliver, you know, 200 leaflets in the street. How did, how did, what fears did you have? Any fears? Um, I was, no, I didn't really. I was very confident in my okay. own ability because the great thing is I was a successful okay. estate agent. Was it all about the money? Yeah, I wanted to be rich. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to earn a lot of money and I couldn't do it working for... Was it just about the money or helping others? Making I... Them? Yeah, the at, deal. at the time, it was it was the money. So how old were you at this point? Roughly? Um, 87, 20, 88. 21. Wow. 20, you wouldn't 20. get 21-year-olds doing that today, would you? Um, well, they're looking at different... They, a lot of them do want to have their own business. A lot of them are selling stuff yeah. on, so, you know, on, on eBay and, okay. I don't know, setting up e-businesses. So, I don't know. The, it's entrepreneurs. People who want to... Be yes. entrepreneurs and, and run their own business and, and be in control of their own destiny and earn more money. That was one of the reasons. And the reason, I don't want to sound like I'm like just interested in money, but I, and I don't want to give a soft story, but I was very poor. We had nothing. My clothes came from a jumble sale. You know, I'd go to school and everyone would have new uniforms. My trousers were really short. You could see my socks, yeah. you know, and the jacket was too big. Yeah. So we were, so I only went, all I wanted to, was to have some, and I thought, what I thought was, it's funny how, you, you change your views, but the guy next door, the kid next door, should I say, you know, 
you know, he lived, lived in a semi, it was a council house, but he had like, I don't know, fizzy drinks makers and a um, soda stream. Yeah. Soda stream, that's yeah. it. You know, they were like dreams for me to have things like that. We didn't, anyway, so. That was your why. That was my why. But ultimately, I was a good estate agent and I knew I could do a good job of helping people sell houses. And um, so I set that business up. The owner of that business did well out of it because he was not having to do anything. He was getting 10%. And as my turnover grew and grew and grew, his, his income, and he was he had other offices that were doing badly and I was helping them. I cut a long story short, after a couple of years, I said, this isn't working. I didn't feel it was fair. So I paid him a good amount of money yeah. to buy out of the business and set it, change the name to Newman's. What year was that then? 90, so two, 1991. 1991. Yeah. Was it a particularly good market at that time? It was very difficult, yeah. Very, very difficult. And, what, and this was in the Midlands, was it? Yeah, yeah, in rugby, yeah. Okay. So what happened then? Were you just, you just became a normal estate agent with a number of offices and bumbled along? So I recruited, you know, friends from the, the country where I was. I recruited a mortgage advisor from where they were and, and we sort of made a partnership and we, we, you know, we had good people. We had, we had a good work ethic. We worked hard. Okay. You know, we were working seven days a week. We were working till eight, eight o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock at night. We'd be going out on Saturday night, coming back Sunday morning and being in for work. So it was hard work. Um, Enjoying it? We, we were loving it. We were loving life and, you know, things were good. And, uh, and although it was a recession sort of time where other agents were cutting back and, and not doing very well, we just worked harder and we were honest yeah. with people with pricing. We right. worked hard with the marketing. I was at a state agency in the 1990s and yeah, the transactions were hard, but you got the deal done and there was a certain amount of satisfaction. Yeah. People came to us because we knew we'd get, they'd get results and they knew they'd okay. pay more. So you were 25, 26, you were in, your mid, in the mid 90s, just bumbling along quite nicely. Yeah. yeah. What, so, did, what, so you got through to the late 1990s, were you just continuing to grow? How, yeah. how, how were you feeling at this time? So we opened three offices, we opened another one in, so we were in rugby, we opened another one in Coventry and another one in Leamington Spa. Um, and things were going, you know, we, I wasn't wanting to do any more than that, to okay. be honest. And uh, we carried on, and then we had another recession. Uh, in 08? In 08, and that's when we made some changes to our business model. I mean, our... What happened in 08 that made you take a step back and go, we need to make this change? So our, the, the, our income halved, literally, and we looked at every single cost. So we had water coolers, they had to go. We had cleaners, they had to go. We literally went back to the bone to save money and it was great exercise because then you realize how much money was being wasted on stuff that wasn't being used um it was very difficult because we had to make people redundant I and mean, there was tears literally it was heartbreaking it just makes me you know put that open my phone just thinking about those hard times but one of the one of the biggest costs for any estate agency business is your salaries okay. and we were paying people really good salaries because we were going well and we wanted to share that out with people yes very generous um, and probably too generous and we realize that that when there's a downturn we don't want to be still paying out these high salaries cars we had a fleets of cars and booper and pensions and so we changed the model and um at the time we we gave all our agents uh, an option we said well look you can continue as you currently are and that's what you'd get paid i can't remember exactly what the salary was or you can have a you can be self-employed running your own business and we would pay you and I can't remember what the percentage was, but it might have been 30 or 40 percent. Um, and uh, this was just valuers, branch managers, necks, um, everyone except for the admin, they were paid the salaries. But anyone who was listing or selling houses, and uh, and they could work it out themselves quite easily. This is you know, so they worked out what they did last year and what they earned on the new model. What would they earn? They all would earn more money. So you might think, well, hang on, you're paying them more money. The benefit to us that we were paying less costs, such as, you know, redundancies, six pay, holiday pay, you know, the less liability, national insurance contributions. There was, you know, <clears throat> and they would be responsible for some of their own costs. So they buy their own laptops, their own computers. Um, so we saved them on, on those sorts of things. It was, it was mutually beneficial. They would also pay a lot less tax as well because they can offset a lot of their costs. Did um, what proportion of your necks and valuers and managers went across? Pretty much 95 percent. Wow. Uh, yeah, there was just a couple of on all of your three or three or four branches. Uh, well, that, we had at the time some fine country offices as well. 
and there was a, um, uh, probably three people in foreign country that wanted to stay as employees, which um, we have said, yeah, no problem. And, and so you gave them the option. <clears throat> yeah, it was so no one was forced. It was all you know. This is the option. What would and what would you like to do? And they all said we want to go this, and so they were all better off financially. They would earn okay. more money. Okay. So if they stopped with Newman's, they were on a 50-50 split. So this at the time, going back now, so our model has evolved and changed over the yeah. years. Going back, I think it was actually 40%, um, and we paid, we actually split that 40% between the person that listed it <coughs> would get 25%, and the person who sold it, uh, property, would get 15%. So if you listed it and sold it, you get 40%. But some people just wanted to focus on listing houses, yes. some people just want to focus on selling, and some want to do both, they have the option. Since then, that, that we've recruited more agents and we've improved the model we pay 50 percent um but now we don't split that the agent that lists the property now sells the property does the viewings does the negotiation and, and deals with that transaction from to start to finish and on reflection <clears throat> seems really obvious now but it's such a better way because let's say if i've listed the house and I've, mm. I've, i'm getting paid 25 percent, someone else might do the viewing and what if they turned up late and what if they didn't do a very good job showing the people around? What if they didn't give the feedback to the vendor? Mm. And that vendor's on the phone to me saying, look, I'm not happy with the service. I'm going to take it off the market. I've lost that. Mm. So now they're dealing with just me, just the person that listed it. And it makes so much more sense. What mistakes have you made <clears throat> or learnings? Sorry, that's what you should say on, on this hub, because I'm sure there's many agents out there who are considering going down this route. Yeah. So I've, there's lots of learnings, lots of mistakes. And, uh, you know, getting the, the, um, the commission structure right is very, very important. And the trouble with that is it's not, it's not a, a quick fix. It's got to evolve. You can't go from literally changing your current model to suddenly paying 50%. And so we, although we have changed it, it has improved and it has got better. Um, we also ask the agents to um, uh, pay a, a contribution towards our cost. They all pay 500 pound a month, but it's great because they're still getting a lot for that. They're getting money for money. Um, what, what are the mistakes? I would say um, recruiting the right people is key. And when, I, when we changed everyone from being employed to self-employed, I thought, wow, they're going to be so more hungry, motivated. They're running their own business, working for themselves. When they sell that house, they're going to earn a lot more money, so they're going to be pushing it. What I found was just because they were self-employed didn't mean they're entrepreneurial, didn't mean they were... In fact, what I had is a lot of self-employed people with an employed mentality. And so they're still going, or oh, I'm going home at this time, or I'm going to have my lunch break, or, you know, and that's fine. I there's no problem with any of that. Um, but they still suddenly were going, well, look, no one's told me how to do this, or what do I do? So they still were very much sort of like employees, and you still had to. So the only thing that really changed was how they got paid at the end of the month. Whereas now, when we recruit, we are recruiting entrepreneurs, we're recruiting business partners, people who want to run their own business but just need that help and support. Um, and that's, that's the difference now. So, and if I've made mistakes, probably recruiting the wrong people in the past has been one of those. What does this hub look like? What, what support do they get for their 50%? Or your, what, how do you earn your half? Yeah, so they, they will be out on the road doing what I call the fun part of the job. Running a business is not fun, it's not the hard bit, that's the ball ache, if you like, of all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And we want the agents, as they do, to go out and do the fun part and the bit that makes the yeah. money. So we take care of everything else. So we're the ones having to deal with right moves, deal with uh, the marketing, coming up with the marketing. So you're paying for right move? Yeah. The Offices, marketing. yeah, marketing, print, design, print and distribution, um, coming up with the marketing campaigns, um, helping with social media, training, support, administration. Um, agents don't want to be taking photographs and floor plans, so we've got someone who will go out and do that. Now, the agents can do all of these things themselves if they want to, but we've got things in place that we can provide the support and do get things done for them. Um, for example, with the photography, um, some agents love photography and they've got a great camera and they want to take their own, but some of them go, I hate taking photographs, I'm rubbish of it, and I don't want to buy a camera. We can get someone in. The owners pay for that, um, but it's a very simple option to the owner. I mean, I say to the owner, um, well, look, if you're getting married, 
would you want your estate agent to take your photos of the wedding? And they're going to go, well, no. Well, look, I can take the photographs of your house, or we can get a professional in. So it's up to you, it's £100, he'll come and do a professional yeah. photography. And if you're selling anything, if you're selling your car, you want to get it validated and you want to get some really good photos. It's the same with your house. We want some really good photos and we need to get your house staged and styled and I'm going to help you with that. And it's £100 and most people go, yeah, no, it's a no-brainer. Okay. But well, we, we're there to provide everything that the agents okay, need. The biggest question I've got yeah. is, is um, let's just say I'm a a valuer that working for one of the corporates or, or yeah. work for an independent. There isn't a Newman's nearby. So my biggest concern is who the hell are Newman's? And also I haven't got five hundred pounds a month to spend on you. I've I've got only I've just about to cover my mortgage because I've got fancy lifestyle and the missus wants to go on holiday to Banadon. Yeah. So do you remember when I first bought my first estate agency and I said well, I haven't even got five hundred pounds? Yeah. He what he did to me was great. He said, look, don't pay anything for the first four months until you've got some commission coming in. So, you know, in the, in the, I'm paying it forward. I'm saying to anyone who joins, look, we'll, you don't pay anything for the first four months until you've got some commission coming in. Okay, but, but I've still got to put food on the table with my family. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll give them an advance on some of the commission. So if you get some listings on the market this month, okay. rather than have to wait three or four months before they're sold and we've been paid, we'll give you some of that commission now. And it's more of a token gesture. It's not to, you know, it's not to pay you a, a salary or a retainer. You're setting up your own business. If you went, anyone who wants to set their own business, they will have to invest money and time and you know, not expect to be making money for maybe 12 months. In this example, we're not asking for anything up front, so it's not like buying a franchise for 10 or 20 grand. You're not having to pay any setup costs. So the only real cost is your time. Um, yeah, so you do need to have some money behind you, but we are there to put help you because we want to support So you've agents. been doing these hubs now for 10 years. How yeah. many associates or partners have you got under both your brands of Newman's and Finer Country in the Midlands? Um, 65. Wow. Yeah. So you've been doing it a long time. Yeah, and we're still learning and we're still changing. And, and, and I've really focused more on Finer Country uh, over the last few years because that's where the higher end properties and the yes. higher value and the higher commissions, and that's worked very well. Um, and I've just left Newman's really just to plod along. However, now, as of now, January, 2019 I've got a growth plan to yes. expand that business because I believe that you know there's a lot of agents there that are either in the corporate yeah. world that want to earn more money um, they're not earning enough money and not only they're going to earn more money but they want that flexibility that lifestyle mm -hmm. that work-life balance okay. and there's agents that are working for online companies just not getting paid enough having to do a lot of work for 150 200 pounds uh, talk to me about um, the marketing that you do and talk to me talk to me about um, why anyone should believe you because at the end of the day there's lots of people out there selling snake oil so let's start let's start off with that why should people trust you why should someone not come and work for <clears> you <throat> but with you yeah so first of all it's this is like a marriage this is a long-term relationship I wouldn't expect anybody um, to I wouldn't expect anybody to to sort of literally jump into bed with me and not know so we have a getting to know you process. So, you know, you know, we don't just have one interview and one chat. There will be a whole uh, process and, and uh, you know, I want to get to know them to make sure to, to make sure it's right for them yes. as much as it is right for me. They're right for the business. So uh, obviously they can talk to anyone who knows me, anyone who's working in our, and I would encourage them to do that. Um, you know, and I'm just an honest, genuine guy, and I know it's easy to say that, but you will never find someone who's got a bad word to say you about never, me. You will um, never. Apart because, from your shoe sense, but yeah, we'll worry about that. Another time. Because I, you know, I'm not a greedy person. I'm not thinking what's in it for me. How can I screw them down? How can I get back and I pay them less? I want to share. This is a very transparent model, and it works for both parties. Um, I mean, if you don't mind me saying, when you know, I, I thought I get stopped a lot when I go to exhibitions. Um, but trust me, I'm not in your league. Well, you, you're, you're, people are constantly coming up and shaking your hand. And guys, there's no one nicer in the estate agency game as an estate well, agent than you, mate. That's very kind of you to say. But look, I'm nothing special. I'm not cleverer than anyone else. I'm not better than anyone else. All I, if there's one thing that's made me different um, or, or, or is that I've invested time in learning. You know, I've been to 
most conferences all over the world, whether it's Australia or South Africa or America, you know, in, in the UK, I've watched the podcast, so listened to podcasts, watched the videos, read the books, been on the conferences. I'm constantly learning and want to learn and improve. And then I want to share that knowledge with other people and I want to help people. I get a more reward and satisfaction from helping people than I do making money. And the more people I help, funnily enough, the more money that actually comes you back, go. you know. So I don't focus on the money. I just know that helping people be successful uh, and have a good life. And if I can share and help people, I will. Um, one thing that I spotted that uh, that was quite different, or I've not seen it in any of the associate hub models, is that you actually have a department that helps your partners with business generation. Yes. Yeah, so we've got you know uh, a team on the phone. So there's a team that are making, uh, well, dealing with all the incoming calls. And so they're dealing with booking valuations, booking viewings, trying to generate mortgage and conveyancing. Um, and then we've got an outbound team that are going through the database. So, so they're ringing people who are registered to get them out viewing houses. If they've got a house to sell, obviously booking valuations, dealing, calling old clients, um, generating business that way. Does that affect my 50-50 split? Yeah. So if the, if the lead is generated from our hub, they take 5%. Um, so if you've generated your own listing, or market appraisal, and you've sold it, you'll get 50%. If the hub's generated the appointment, you get uh, 45%. Oh, not bad. Um, and if they've generated the viewing, and they people, they take 5%, so you end up with 40%. But you've actually not had to generate the appointment. Someone has to generate the viewing. You've just got to do the valuation appointment, do the viewing, and you're getting 40%. So it works well. It's Does fair. It can we go on to the marketing that, that you do now? Yeah, sure. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to get this bad boy out. Yeah. And... Um, well, that's a bit different. Yeah, well, I believe in personal branding. You know, um, people are not interested in this. This is just a company. They're interested in the individual. And I believe in personal branding. And, and the, an agent's personal brand is their picture and their name. And that picture and their name should be everywhere. It should be on the for sale signs, business cards. Every piece of marketing material we produce is personalized, even if it's headed paper. Um, and, you know, you know, I want them to promote themselves. So everyone will have their own, per, um, I say, personal business page on Facebook. And so Lee, it will say Lee, yeah. you know, uh, local uh, rugby property expert or whoever he is. And because it's a business page, he can then boost or, or yes. pay for advertising um, on, on Facebook. And most of our agents probably pay £3 a day on Facebook. Yes. So over 30 days, that's £90. But they will get their name out there, they're, they're promoting their listings, they're promoting themselves, and it's a business generation so the, tool. The, the person is as important as the brand, because some people, if I'm in deepest Lincolnshire, I won't know who Newmans are, yeah. but, but you, you're getting some branding, but also it's all about you as the person, and people do buy people, don't they? I think it's more about the agent, um, they're equally, if not more important than, than the brand. So that, so that person, Lee, could be working for Connells or Shipways, they want to do with Lee. They don't care where he's working, but they do want to know that he's part of something bigger, yes. that he's part of an organisation that gives him credibility, um, that they know it's a professional organisation and that we're here to support him. If he was working from an, his back bedroom, yes. he well, might not get... Possibly the estates. Yeah, with one. which he could do, but he knows the costs of doing that, the costs of right move in the marketing and the websites. Okay. And also... He would probably would only get a low fee. He'd have to fight on yeah. fees and be charging half a percent. And you're training these guys because you get all your 60 guys together once yeah. a month and they, and they help each other out. I've been to one of those meetings. Yeah. I mean, so basically, if you are a valuer or a manager working for a corporate or an independent, yeah. it doesn't matter that there's not Newmans around, is there? No, no. I mean, it's all about the agent. And I know that there's people who are selling their house. They want to deal with a certain... They want to deal with John who sold their last yeah. house. And they don't care whether he's at this agent or the other. Where is he? And they want to deal with him. Um, and it's him they're recommending. So this is key. And, and also the great thing is for having this backing that Lee can now go out and ask for 2.5%. Or even if he only asks for 2%, he's personally taking home 1%. So if it's a £500,000 house and it's a 2% fee, it's 10000 he would take home five, five just to confirm there's, there's no money up front. Yep. It's five hundred pounds a month to contribute to the costs. You cover all the right move costs, the marketing, everything. Yeah, you can defer the five hundred pounds a month and also you'll sub them some of their commission in the short term. Yeah, but well, we're not defer cash? we're not deferring it, we're not they're not charged that five hundred pounds a month okay. for four months. Okay. Uh, there's there's no catch, it's very transparent, very simple, very straightforward. 
um, and it's a win-win for and, everyone involved. And if anyone can pick up the phone to any Newman property expert, that you know, there's no stool pigeons, and just say, "What's it like?" Yeah, and of course. And I, I'm not. I don't want to make it sound so too easy. And like, you've still got to get out there and do the hard work. Haven't you've got to do it. But if you're a good estate agent, and and I feel for those guys that are working in in an estate agency where they're really good, and there's someone else in the office who's average. And you're working harder, doing more, bringing more money in, and you're getting paid the same as the guy who's okay. average or poor. Now, this is not good for the people who are average or poor. If you're not very good at saying so, you won't work on it. Because if you're not selling your houses, you're not going to earn any money. But if you're good and you're bringing in and you want to set up your own business, you want to be entrepreneurial, I wouldn't, you know, because there's, there's three options in the state agency today. You can either work in a traditional estate agency, you know, corporate or independent, and that's hard. You've got the online and you're not getting paid that much in there. Yeah. Or you set up on your own. Now, the problem with setting up on your own is the cost mm -hmm. and the risk and the no money and no profit. So this, I believe, is the, the right option. It's, it's being your own boss without the, the normal setup costs. You learn more money um, because you're getting 50%. Now, even if you're running your own business, your profit margin would only be 10 or 20% at best, if anything. Um, Whereas this is 50% off the top line. So we're obviously bearing the cost out of our 50%. And so we're paying for the boards to be put up and taken down. We're paying for Zoopla and on the market. We're designing cards, printing them, distributing them. Um, so each agent will get 3,000 canvassing cards distributed in their area every month. And that could be a, a market update report, a leaflet, a, a newsletter. Um, when they put a house on the market, we send out direct mail invitations to either an open house or saying it's new to the market to the nearest hundred properties that are on the market yeah. um, when we sell a house we're doing the same canvassing cards going to the area direct mail cards um, we're helping them with social media because people understand the the benefits of video content marketing mm -hmm. social media but often don't know how so we're there to help support train um, and when you're in an environment with other people that are doing it and believe in it it's easier to get make a start and get doing it. Sean, I haven't been paid a penny to do this, but you're a good friend. I've known you for years, and I just wanted to bring this to the world, what you're doing, and I wish you well, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you.